Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. What's the difference between a software developer and a programmer? Software developer for me is someone who is able to create entire systems. A programmer can also be a software developer, but a programmer is someone who just writes code and writes little, can write little programs. Software developer would develop an entire web app from scratch, would be able to design all the different layers, choose what, ar what uh, architectures were going to be put in place, what libraries, uh, what design patterns you were going to use. A software developer uh, is, far, is a very experienced programmer. Uh, in a nutshell, is a very experienced programmer. Oh, well, a lot of very experienced programmers never become software developers because they don't go to that level. They work on specific little things here and there and they don't develop entire architectures. Although some people might argue, argue if you get into that level, then you have the software architect. So you could have the, uh, the scripter, which is kind of some, somebody who writes very simple lines of programming code. Maybe a guy or a girl who writes a little bit of sn snippets of Python code to automate software. A lot of software out there like uh, video rendering engines and so forth. They'll use Python as an example to uh, allow you to control uh, how the software operates, maybe do batch operations and so forth. So that's somebody traditionally you would call a scripter because they're writing little scripts. Scripts is another word for snippets, little short pieces of code. And by the way, there's, there's a lot of demand for that as well. A friend of mine worked at a pretty big uh, production studio and he had a difficult, difficult time finding good Python scripters. And they were paid very well, you know, paid very well. So they weren't developing applications, they weren't uh, building systems, but they were using lots of lots of Python to automate the whole process. Python is kind of like the was kind of like the programming language or the scripting language used to glue everything together. Some people call these system level languages. Python isn't the only ch choice out there, there's many others as well. But Python is probably the most popular. So a programmer, I would say, takes it to a level above scripter. We're writing more robust code. So a programmer uh, might be somebody who writes, uh, you know, may write uh, parts of a web app. A programmer uh, you know, well, there you go, writes parts, parts of a web app, or they may write uh, parts of a, a desktop application. When, is it, when does a programmer become a software developer? A software developer goes into the bigger picture issues. They may touch on architecture. That's the highest level architect, by the way, software architect. I'll get into that in a second. So a software developer will be able to you know, choose the type of database and be able to uh, organize the uh, infrastructure between the, uh, the middle layer, the code base, and the database, and the view layer, etc., etc. So they're able to put it all together, fit it all together, understand, they understand the bigger picture issues. Um, my courses, my studio web courses, where I teach you know, HTML5, CS3, JavaScript, PHP, Python, SQL, databases, I think it's more directed towards, not I think, it is more direct to, towards making you developer rather than scripter or just programmer. Because I get into all those big picture issues, I help you understand the choices that you make as a developer or as a programmer and why and how, for instance, how does JavaScript fit into this equation, into the, uh, into the stack and what's it used for, where I've seen a lot, of course, a lot of other courses, they never touch on that. They say, oh, here's some JavaScript, we're going to create a little bouncy game, and, uh, and that's it. But they don't show you how to use it in the real world. That, to me, is super important, so that's integrated into what I teach. So the developer is able to look at a project holistically. They're able to tackle different elements and put it all together. So the developer is, is, is an advanced programmer, if you will. Um, and then finally, you have, the, you have the software architect on top of that. Software architect literally 
architects of the software. My role these days are more or less uh, software architect with Studio Web, the SaaS that I own. I got so many things I have to do. I just don't have time to go in there and write code. But what I do do is I do choose the languages, the frameworks. I get into the nitty gritty with my lead developer. Uh, he will uh, sit down with me and if he had, runs into problems and we'll go over the best way to tackle a particular situation. That's why, you know, when I emphasize to people, tutorial based training should be very limited. You shouldn't get caught into the tutorial uh, world where you're just doing tutorials, always afraid that you're not good enough. Understand as a developer, you're always having to learn more, you're always problem solving. And you're never going to find a tutorial in the world. There is not a tutorial in the world that you'll be able to use that code, that tutorial, and just plug it in to a particular project that you're going to be working on. It's literally not ever going to happen. Every project, every app that you build is going to have its own thing. Anyhow, so there you go. So you got those uh, four levels. I would say you got scripter programmer, developer, architect, and there's a blending between them. Um, they're all good. You know, I know guys who are scripters, but they're really good at what they do. Couldn't develop an app. Well, they, you know, they, they have not developed apps, but they're really good at their scripting and they're so essential to the business that they get paid a lot of money and they got a lot of flexibility and freedom because they manage all these scripts that they have all over the place and they make sure everything is keeping is kept up and running. So that's very important. That's the type of job you, you can't farm out, right? You can't farm that out. You can't farm out uh, the operations of an organization where you need in-house people to manage all that, that code that's gluing everything together. It's very respectable. Programmer, again, it's, it's, it's a step above. Programmer actually builds systems. Um, but they're not as advanced. They, may, they don't have the experience. To me, the distinction between programmer and developer, I've just discussed it. To me, that's more of an experience thing more than anything else. You know what I mean? It, after several years, the programmer eventually becomes the developer, if you will. And architect, that's a whole different game. Few people can become architects. And I'll end with the story. A good friend of mine who's a very good programmer and I used to, I'm in the car here, so I used to use the car analogy. And I remember I had him work for me on a project and I would say, okay, let's build a car. And I want this and this and this specs. And I give him the specs for a car. Just, you know, macro level specs. I was assuming he was a developer and understood what had to be in the car. So I get the project back. I get the project back from him and I got the car and I'm looking at the car and it's a real Homer mobile. What do I mean by that? Well, I sit in the car and I go, hey, where's the steering wheel? And he goes to me, oh, it's in the back seat. I said, why'd you put the steering wheel in the back seat? He said, you didn't tell me you wanted it in the front seat. I said, it's a car. Or I'd say to him, where are the brakes? He goes, these are not for brakes. What? I said, where are the brakes? He said, you didn't ask for brakes, he tells me. I go car a car has brakes he says you didn't say that it needed brakes so you know I'm making a bit of a joke here but literally that's what happened I had him write the shell of, a, of, a, of, a, of an app that was going to become an app and he was just a programmer and for whatever reasons he didn't put into place things that a more experienced developer would have put into place. He was highly experienced as a programmer, but when it got into that level, where in that higher, slightly higher level, it just wasn't there. At the end of the day, you can experiment with different levels of coding, shall we say, or programming. You may be a scripter, a programmer, a developer, and you may eventually become architect. If you're experienced and good in, at any of these levels, there's a lot of money to be made in terms of jobs. You just gotta figure out what you are good at. So, you know, with the last story where I had the car analogy, this programmer makes a lot of money. He's very good at designing things. So if you use the car analogy, 
If I told him, design a steering wheel, make sure it could do this, this, and that, and that, he would design an amazing steering wheel. But if I asked him to design a car, you don't want him to design the car because, as I said, he, he might put the steering wheel in the back seat.